and there are some moments in my life where I feel I am in darkness. I don't know where the anger came from, but I needed to fight. Right now, you have to be ready for a war. You understand? Because this guy is not a pushover. He's, he's not going to die easy. In your mind, don't say it's going to be one round. In your mind, be ready for a very bloody fight. My religion gives me hope. My religion gives me strength. You have to be scared of only God. I'm not scared of any human being. I'm only scared of God. My daily routine is like very simple, very robotic. I wake up like 6 a.m. in the morning, I start pray, and after that I leave for the gym, I train, after that I eat, then I pray, train again in the evening classes, then I sleep. And I wake up and do it all again. Let's go! Keep going, we have energy high, natural energy. We're not using the music. Your motivation is yourself. Let's go, guys. Your motivation is yourself. Focus, focus. So back in February 2022, I had a fighter reach out to me. He told me his name was Shazab and he was from Pakistan. I asked him to send me some footage of his last fight and he did. It was with one championship. So I sent it over to Awesome. I said, take a look at this guy. What do you think? If you look at Pakistan, they're, they're not producing the highest level athletes. It might be the funding for the sports teams. It might be a lot of different things. It might be science behind sports, whatever it is. You don't see world-class athletes coming out of Pakistan. So initially when Shazeb found GOAT Management and my wife, Laura, I didn't have too much confidence in this project. And to be honest, I told her, I'm like, look, um, his record is great, 74 and four. He's won some international titles, but I don't really know how great he is until he, he comes here. You know, and I advised her, hey, you know, I don't really think investing in this project is going to be a big thing because to get somebody from the mountains of Pakistan over to America is not an easy task. I just didn't think it was realistic to be able to get Shazab in the country to begin with. If your fight's further away, you're further away on the card. Okay, that's how it works. You're further away on today's card. Okay, that's how it's going to work. We'll be fair with it. Okay, guys. Life back in Pakistan was like so poor. It's like very hard uh, to live there and make your name. My city, I live in Quetta. It, uh, it's a part of uh, Balochistan. We all family live together like our grandfather, grandparents. In one room, we all sleep together and we have like six brothers. So there are no beds. We just lay down on the floor and sleep. There is no electricity. Sometimes we don't have a gas. Sometimes we go hungry because we don't have a way to cook our foods and uh, electricity goes for like hours, for our days. We don't know when it comes back. Uh, we had no opportunities there. You don't go for your dreams. You work for food. You think you're about to take down so much that you're not striking. You need to squat lower. Let go of your hands. Squat lower. You're standing so tall, bro. You can stand tall when you're far. When we start getting in boxing range, it's not worth it. Get low. Get that up, bro. Stay up straight. You're giving up, Jose. Get up. Get the fucking bag, Jose. Go jabs and crosses, and just the distance, you stay long. stay down, that's the problem. We stand back up, but what happens is you get taken down and you give up. Get up straight! Hey! Hey! Use black man. Warren, you're a black, he's happy. Let's go. Let's go, Warren, you're a black, he's happy. Let's go, Warren. You're black, he's happy. Let's go. Stay on top. Stay on top. Stay on top. Grab the legs. Grab the legs. Oh, 
learning what I needed to learn. He's breaking down mentally, he's giving up on himself, and it's like, it's like, shit, I, like, why did I give him this fight? Like, he's not ready for MMA. It's, it's extremely, extremely clear. This guy much easier. In Pakistan, I'm like undefeated fighter. I won like na many national championships, and national championship is not an easy thing. <laughs> After that, I had the opportunity to represent my country in one championship, world's biggest martial arts organization. Moise is the one that's closing the gap between the two. Rind looking slightly the more... I fought very hard and it was a very tough fight. Unfortunately, I lost. Once he gets inside, the follow-up shots are hurting him. I think this could be over it is. The referee waves it with 48 seconds left of the final round. It was a dark time of my career and I didn't fight for two years and it was a long time for a fighter and I wasn't sure that I will be fighting again or not. And when I found the GOAT management company, I knew this will be a life-changing opportunity for me and I reached out to them and I talked to Laura. Shazabe found GOAT Worldwide initially through Instagram. He needed representation. He was in Pakistan. So I wanted to make sure that this guy was for real. He was professional, charismatic and I liked what I saw and on the interview I asked him okay what is your goal what's your next step he said I haven't fought in two years I want to be UFC champion I want to be the best in MMA I knew that the next logical step was to bring him here to America the first hurdle was money I had never done this before so I reached out to an immigration attorney nine thousand dollars is what it was gonna cost now, we're still a small company. I don't have that type of money. Shazade doesn't have that type of money. How are we gonna get that? I had a retirement fund from when I worked at my office job and it had accumulated some good money for retirement. Now, I ended up pulling that out and paying for the rest of the attorney. And that was it. Once we had the attorney, he started on the application. I knew that there were obviously different possibilities of what could happen. I mean, maybe he comes here and he's not that good. Maybe he comes here and he decides to get another job and quit. So those are all realistic possibilities. I, at the end of the day, I don't know this person, but I trusted in our conversation. I knew that I wanted to give back and do something for the Pakistani community. There's no Pakistani fighter in the UFC, in karate combat, in a lot of promotions and in Goat Shed. There's a ton of Latin American fighters no Asian fighters. This was something I wanted to do and I had a vision, a very clear vision of him coming here. And if I could just get him in and I could convince Awesome to coach him and to give him the exposure he needs, this is huge. This is revolutionary for the whole sport and for Pakistan. So that to me is what drove me. And I knew from our conversation, his heart, and I knew this was a good person. And I just wanted to, I wanted to commit to it. Good, shoot, finish the takedown. He's gonna single leg, get up. Good. Slide your knee out. Knee down. Yes. Let's go again. Good. Run away. Excellent. That was a forward roll. Again, again, again. That was a forward roll. We don't want to do it like that. You gotta pay attention. Roll properly. Let's go again. He's mostly done boxing, kickboxing, you know, whatever it is. But he's never done MMA. Now we're throwing in throwing him in to the most brutal sport in the world. You're making me not want to, you're making me want to pull him out. Shazade, we're here. pulling out. We're not, you, this is a horrible idea. You just, <laughs> he just started MMA five weeks ago and I'm putting him in the most violent sport in the world. Herbert stuff. Oh my God, oh my God. It's a terrible idea. This has never worked out. People have tried this over and over again. The, the, oh, jeez, the, the yeah, eyelid is falling off. Yeah. You get a great striker, you throw him in MMA under six months, and he loses every time. Right now, what a crazy fight this has been. Just what are we doing? And we're doing bare knuckle MMA? This is the worst idea ever. This, this might be pure arrogance on my side. I might ruin one of my biggest prospects right now with this decision. But I believe in him. Here's the thing. 
there's a lot of pressure on you because there's a lot of information you need to learn at once. I know it's a lot, I know it's overwhelming. For sure, I know you have a smile on sometimes, but you're not sleeping at night happy. I know you're not, because you're a perfectionist, okay? You have a lot of people that are gonna be watching this fight. We have to be perfect. Every single day has to be perfect to practice. And right now, you're doing it. Maybe it's not coming out when you spar, but we are doing the right things. And as long as we're doing the right things every single day, you will be successful on the day of your fight. I need you to be confident in this because round one and two today, you lost a lot because of this, because you beat yourself in your mind. You are not ready for MMA today. You are not. But you will be ready on September 8th. I need you to hold this in you. You need to be strong for you and for everybody around you. You understand? Because you're fighting for more than just yourself. You're fighting for more than yourself. Okay. This is your time for you. I can't just win. I need to make a statement because 141 million people are praying for me. They are watching my fight, so I can't lose like that. So you feel pressure, but sometimes it gives you hope that you can't lose because everyone is watching you. They are believing in you, so you have to win. On the biggest platform he's ever fought in and one of the biggest platforms in the world. And he did such a great job. He chased the guy around the ring. He couldn't finish the guy because the guy ran around the ring. I mean, if you watch the clips, it's hilarious. But it was an unbelievable debut for him. And he instantly became a national hero. He hit the news stations all over Pakistan. There were stadiums filled watching his fight live. And he solidified himself as the truth as a real national hero and the first ever world-class fighter to ever come out of Pakistan. When I'm close to fight, uh, I always think about like, I, I'm come from very far. I've been to training camp, like long training camp. Every day you're tired because every part of body is like dead. You don't want to wake up from the bed. You know, you want to sleep all the day. But you have to do it. You have to do for your future and for your fight. Here everything is so organized, like uh, everyone is like rich. They don't know everyone has cars. In Pakistan, nobody has cars. You know, everyone like only rich people has cars. And when I, uh, in Pakistan, uh, I went to the gym like walking, like 30 minutes walking sometimes bicycle like you know in here everyone has cars like uh, life is so changed here everyone like uh, like spoon like they uh, they bond with sp like uh, golden spoon like you know my favorite part is to like you know wake up in the morning and drive drive my car to the gym like you know one hour drive enjoy some music like you know it's very good and uh, see the people here uh, explore new places new like you know uh, it's good. It's very good. I love it. Now, I want you guys to get used to shooting doubles off your uppercuts. Something very, very awkward. A lot of people don't really do that. So I want you guys to get used to it. So we're going to go watch. Level change, uppercut, uppercut, and I'm going to shoot, and I can finish any double leg. Any double leg I want. You can practice your elbows. I'm going to let you be free with it, okay, to practice your inside game. The idea is the uppercuts got us in such close distance that you're either going to have to shoot or use your elbows and knees to go ahead and clinch. Shazay first gets to this gym and I just didn't see it happening because I saw the soft-spoken Shazay that prays and, and you know is, is a humble dude. As training became more intense, as he began sparring harder and harder, I started seeing a different side of Shazay. And I said, okay, maybe, maybe this is for him. The issue is if he gets taken down, he gets finished every time. Up, you can't get up. You're giving up, Jose. Get up. That gives me a lot of anxiety and makes me really nervous. Because, yes, he has good takedown defense, but if he touches the ground, it's over. He gets submitted. My wife, which is his manager, didn't even like the fight. She didn't even like the idea. She's like, what are you doing right now? Sometimes, passion trumps logic. When he fought, he would walk up to the opponent, get in their face, stare at them in the eyes. His whole spirit just was like, 
overwhelming the opponent. There's people out there that pretend they have no fear. They, they're pretending. This guy, he has the fear and he doesn't care. That's scarier. I'm not scared of any human being. I'm only scared of God. There's people out there that say they're willing to die. This man's willing to die in there. So I believe in him. Welcome fight fans, martial arts enthusiasts, and combat connoisseurs to the Star Veterans Memorial Arena right here in Jacksonville, Florida. This is Game Brad Bare Knuckle, and this is the most violent show on earth. Right now, you have to be ready for a war. You understand? Because this guy is not a pushover. He's, he's not going to die easy. In your mind, don't say it's going to be one round. In your mind, be ready for a very bloody fight. Let's bring these guys out. Carlos Guerra. Uh, oh, yeah. A lot of MMA fights, but also uh, four and two in bare knuckle fought in the UK a couple times. I commentated a couple of those fights for... First karate combat fight was explosive. Throws kicks beautifully. Guerra flashes one. Take your time, Chazé. Breathe. People can can you know disguise things better there. It's a hard one. A little fake knee to switch into into southpaw temporarily. That little switch to the southpaw sets up the, there's a hard punch off the clock kick. And I said he might, well, he's got to defend that uh, that heel that Guerra's yeah, he going to get that leg off of his Guerra's got something. Down. Yes, he does. Yeah. Get out of there. Breathe, breathe. And this is why leg locks are super dangerous in MMA, especially from bottom, because you know what? Then comes the ground He's attack. hurting him here, yeah, hurting him bad. He's got control of the wrist. And Ooh, goes, nice oh. knee. Perfect time. Yeah, he's got a hurt, and he's got a shelling. The ref might stop this if he doesn't yeah, turn into him. Yeah, we're close, we're close. Oh, oh, my goodness. Did you see yeah. that knee? Kayla, <laughs> I, fe I felt you. I could feel you. He's got, he's really got a good, hurt, uh, hurt, oh, hurt yeah, bad. Really. When you, oh, no, yeah, this is it. Like, Turn in, or I mean, he yeah, uh, right. to attack him. Oh. The most violent show on earth. I just want uh, everyone to remember me, like by good name, like you know, they say, like, oh, he he was a warrior, he was a good fighter, he he was he did something for his people, his country. This is my dream. I'm working on it to become a reality. After he won, I was super proud of him. He is a very tough fighter, which is the person that I believed in, and I knew he was all along. There's never been a world-class fighter from Pakistan. He's that first guy that's fighting on an extremely large scale in front of millions and millions and millions of people. He solidified himself as the truth. God gave me the gift of fighting, and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> 